All right, when I first saw this, it was just a log cut up. Uh, it was a cool piece of crotch, and I thought it would make a cool bowl. So I took it, chopped it up with a chainsaw, and I've let it dry, treated it with some wax, but I've let it dry a little bit. It does have some really severe bowing right here where this has not shrunk as much as this stuff. A little bit of splitting here, I'm checking here in the, uh, the figured wood, and then a really good split right there and a really good split right there. So my idea was a bowl, but with these splits, I don't know how great of a bowl I'm gonna be able to make out of it. But what I've done is I've screwed down two blocks here where this just fits right between those. Yeah, we can line it up like that. Now I've wrote, it's got some room, but what I do is I rotate it that way. Now it's got a wiggle in it. So I need to get that wiggle out. Okay, so that shim right there, the wiggle's out from underneath it. And now I need to keep it secure in place. Now, Okay, it's not bouncing anymore, so I need to get it secured in place that way. So I'm going to take a couple more shims. This one I opened up this way. Lock that there. Lock that there. So now we got to get the design on. And in order to design, we need to know what our spec specifications are. So. I'm planning on doing X, Y in this corner and Z top. So right here we're 20 inches in length. At our tallest we're just about 16 and a half that way. Let's run over to the computer and get this design. Alright, so here we are in Aspire. Currently I've got it to where I'm setting up the job. I know the shape is rather unusual but I have made this as tall as the tallest and as wide as the widest parts of it so 20 by 17 covers the entire area of the job space 3.75 inches thick is the thickest part of the material I am going to do the bottom corner and I'm going off material surface because it is uneven so I'm starting there I can rerun this same program at just changing my Z start point and if I need to go deeper so what I did was I came in here and I created a square that or a rectangle that was the size of the entire area. Pretty straightforward. Then I created a pocket tool path to where using a two-inch bit I'm gonna do really fine cuts because this is a hardwood and I'm gonna be going pretty fast. Right now I'm going 400 inches per minute. 18,000 RPMs. I'm only going two tenths of an inch deep and I think I'm doing a quarter inch step over. And overall right now this tool path is going to take me 11 minutes. With the 3D view on this and the preview. So I'm going to take a couple passes and it's going to hit some dead space out here and some dead space up here but that's all right, it's only 10 minutes and I may have to run this two or three times. I could have drawn this to where it was the exact shape of the block, but that's gonna, that would take more time than it's gonna save me on machining. So now I'm going to save the tool path. I'll save it in my G codes. <clears throat> something that I can keep track of what it is, save it, then I'll transfer that over to the thumb drive and we'll pick it up on the machine. All right, we've got that designed up. I've got it put in the uh, system. I'm double checking, make sure I'm secure, and I'm not. I've still got a little bit of a wiggle here, so you always want to make sure you're as secure as possible. And with just shims, just wedging it in there, sometimes you might not get it. And then with a little bit of wiggling, that's going to work its way out. 
and I may have to go further than just passive shims or just shims. I may have to actually get into screwing this down. I'm going to double the shim here. So the shim was contacting here, so I had a point of contact here and here. I'm going to put a second shim in to get a point of contact right there. And then another shim right here so I can get contact right there. See how that's actually fitting between the wood and the shim? A little bit. Okay, that's locked in. I could tap it in a little bit. Don't want to hit it real hard with something real big, but some little taps. Just tap, tap, tap it in. Tap, tap, tap it in. Okay, check that again. That feels much better. A block this size, I'm not worried about it, picking it up and throwing it across the room. But if that breaks loose while I'm coming across that, it could just cause a little bit of wiggle where I don't want the wiggle and then we'll have to stop the program and start over. Bring it back. Smart tool, single tool, oh. MPG's on, can't do that, single tool, Just make sure we're coming down the right spot. Okay, now it's got my Z set. So we should be able to run program. I'm going to go kick on the dust collector and then we'll get it started. So what I noticed here as I was doing this, or as this was cutting, is now I'm two tenths of an inch over too far that way. And I missed this uh, 0.4 inch corner right here. So basically I made it a little bit too, I made my envelope a little bit too small. So what I did is when I noticed that, while it was doing the work, I came in and adjusted the tool path. Uh, increased it to a negative 0.5 tolerance so basically made the envelope half an inch bigger so it should encapsulate all that and I can rerun it but rather than leaving those sticking up there's just a rerunning toolpath just for that I can shave that off without even thinking about it uh, so I saw this corner while it was cutting. What I didn't see was this lip right here. So I still need to go deeper because of this and that. So for my Z, I'm still going to do a control execute MDI clear. Z minus point two, enter, execute. So now it's went there, I'm gonna reset my Z. I don't need to change any of my others, but if I hit go right now, that may come over to this without coming up. So I'm gonna make sure, I always make sure to lift my Z up, get it clear of the product. Thumb drive, program open, pull it off the USB, updated, and then we're good to go. couple 
intricacies of what's going on here or what I did along the way to make things a little bit easier and where we got to. Okay. So, look at this. I've got a little bit of burn marks here, a uh, little bit right here. This is pear. It is a very hard wood and I had the program set to run at 400 inches per minute at 18,000 RPMs. I knew that was going to be too fast for the two inch cutter so, to go at that slow of a uh, travel speed. So after I started up, I noticed I was getting a little bit of burn along the length of the cuts. So I cranked that up. This. So I was able to cut it fast enough that I only got a little bit of burn on the end. One way I could avoid that would be to extending the cut out here because as it turns, that corner stops and comes back around. That's when it slows down below that 700 inches per minute. It's got to speed back up. But it's that pause right there as it's turning to give you that little bit of burn. Not really worried about it on this side. I'm probably going to end up uh, sanding this down some more, whatever's left after I get done with it. So now I've got the other side. So it's going to be as simple as dropping this back into my jig. I'm flat already because I've already surfaced it. I don't have to shim underneath. But I want to shim out here towards the end, so I'm going to double shim it right from the beginning. So all my pressure is on this corner. These odd shapes are a little bit trickier to work with, but the end results work very rewarding, so it's worth putting in a little bit extra effort. Okay, we're there. I think we're good. Then I need to just come back, do my execute MDI Z minus point two again. So it went down there. Reset my zero, bring it up. set for two passes but I noticed towards the end of the first pass that it had cleared down all what I needed to surface so I stopped it early only did one pass no point taking an extra tenth off if I don't need to because again I was saying my goal let's get this out of the way my goal was to keep this as thick as possible and so right now we are still at three inches thick or just a 30 second over maybe 64th over three inches so this crack still comes all the way to here this one still comes all the way to there I was kind of hoping that they were really shallow but they've got the depth but I'm starting to see some amazing figuring right here. I knew we had some cool figuring right along in here, but to see that come down throughout here tells me that this is gonna be an amazing piece by the time I'm done with it. But that is how you surface a uneven slab. Shim it up, wedge it in place best you can, and run tool pads until you get one side flat, flip it over, and keep going so that one's ready for design and then we'll get some uh, ideas i'm considering carving a bowl that just leaves a two inch side on this just following this contour two inches to the outside another thing i've contemplated 
is to design a heart into here and just carve this out in the shape of a heart, leave the live edge exterior where it's not parallel, uh, carve that into a heart and leave it that way. I've also considered carving this section into a heart and then tracing it out and making it a finished bowl, no live edge at all. So please let me know down in the comments what you think would look best on this. Uh, should I just make it a bowl in the shape of the log? Should I do the shape of the heart but leave the live edge? Or should I do something completely different? Throw out there what you want to see done with this slab of wood. Uh, and who knows, maybe this will be a crowd pick. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.